One of the things that you have to do when you get on the ice is cut yourself a hole, obviously, so you can fish. The only challenge is that in the winter time, depending how cold the winter's been, that ice can be anywhere from six inches to over three, four feet in thickness. Most people will either use a gas power auger or they'll use an electric power auger. Today, there are so many augers on the market and I had the privilege of using the Strike Master 40 volt electric auger and I'm telling you, this thing is amazing. It cuts through ice like a knife going through butter. And the nice thing is that it has rechargeable batteries. So it's very clean for the environment. You just take extra batteries if you're gonna cut lots of holes and for your next outing, you just put them on charge and you're ready to go. This is amazing, you know. We're out here, we're probably out about five or six miles from shore. And it hasn't been easy because of this wind. And the other thing that we're dealing with on this particular day, this is the third day of a full moon, which isn't in our best interest because whitefish can do a lot of feeding at night. So we have a harder time getting them to bite during the day. A lot of times too, you know, if the hook, if fish is hooked just on the edge of the mouth, when you try to bring it up too fast, it'll actually hit the side of the hole. Come on, can I pull them up? I'm gonna, I'm gonna use James' technique, look. I'm gonna slide them up, look it. I bet you when they're down there feeding near the bottom, because of that dark back and that silvery, like gold sides, they're almost invisible to their prey. Look it, you can see how that mouth is. It's not that big, but they can open it pretty wide. And when it closes, you can see it actually is on the bottom part of the fish, so they can go right along the bottom. Now, I haven't had this guy out of the water too long. He's actually being really good. He's being like a TV prop. Look at this beautiful specimen. He's gonna be released. Now, because the hole is pretty long, I'm gonna kind of launch it. So you better watch quick. There he goes. And he should be gone, right down to the bottom. Now, I'm amazed, you know, I've used finesse fish for probably, I'm gonna say almost 40 years. This is such a simple lure, but you can see how flexible that plastic is, and you can see the profile that it looks just like a minnow. Whitefish can reach weights in some lakes of over five pounds. In fact, the lake we're fishing produces whitefish up to 10 pounds. When whitefish get that big, they really learn to fish on smaller bait fish and gobies. Smaller whitefish in isolated inland lakes will feed mostly on invertebrates and little organisms along the bottom and also crayfish. But when whitefish grow big, they predominantly look for bait fish. You know, some people think bigger is better. How about longer? Look at my ice fishing rod. It's five feet from the end of the butt to the tip of the rod tip. So this is actually one of the new rods the Tip and Jig came out with this year. It's a two piece, so it connects in the center, but it also pops out so you can interchange it with the other shorter rods. So this rod, maybe a lot of guys wouldn't use for ice fishing if they're fishing for smaller fish, but you know what? I've got lots of friends that go for steelhead through the ice when they're at the mouth of the Great Lakes tributaries in the winter time and they use light line and those steelhead fight like crazy and they get them up to like 10, 14 pounds. So a long rod like this would actually work really well. And also on some of the bigger northern lakes where you get whitefish like we are today and lake trout, you'd have a lot of fun on a longer rod like this. Got him. Hello. You know, I'm looking in the distance, James, look at all the machines that are out here. Quite a few today. I don't think anybody has walked out here the no, distance no. that we're come out. <laughs> now, I'm admiring this baby because it's not just a Yamaha, and that's a 700cc, a 4x4, but I'm looking at it. This is like a totally souped up machine. Yeah, we did a lot of modifications on it to okay, customize well, it for the ice. And the tracks, those oh, are yeah. like amazing. They're like a tank. I guess you can go with them through deep snow, yeah. no problem. The, the tracks, are, if you see it when you go on the lakes now, they're just unbelievably popular. The last five years, you didn't see a lot of tracks, but the technology in the tracks now, you can run them all year. Um, they just float on top of the snow. So believe it or not, these walks should go through stuff that snowmobiles have a hard time going through. Wow, so. amazing. Just tapping that MIGS on the bottom, just ever so gently. And there we go. 
Man, you're the epitome of a hook setter. <laughs> James, you don't uh, hesitate. You pull the trigger. You Bang. gotta pull that trigger. Ooh, it looks like a good fish. I can see it. This is nice because you got like that clear ice. Somebody else was, oh, 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 nice and easy, nice and easy. Good one, okay. Perfect, I don't get my hands wet. You know, when I see these fish in the stores, the smaller ones, I don't know where they come from, maybe like Winnipeg. They're pretty expensive when you buy them.